Hello everyone. Harry hates it. Even he can't do this anymore. Harry is frustrated and Harry is annoyed. Everyone can see that in Harry's latest appearance. You reap what you sow. Harry, no one even wants to pity him. It lies in his morals and his mentality, which is too bad. Too bad, I must say. One thing that we noticed about Prince Harry in that recent interview with CBS was actually this, and I believe it's fair to say that this is the thing that we noticed. That particular expression of complete and utter weariness. You know, dear ladies, you are aware of what I am referring to. Naturally, it is easy to comprehend that Meghan regarded this as a perfect opportunity, especially on the occasion of her birthday, to ensure that all eyes were focused on her. However, behind the scenes, things were not necessarily going the way that they were supposed to at CBS, as they always do. Permit me to expand. This is really interesting. In fact, because when you think about it, the developments that have taken place between Meghan Markle's company and her management team or publicity team. They really wanted to reposition Meghan as this brand new person, you know, sort of a mother to children. The battles that she's got with all of that kind of stuff, this is something that you should take into consideration. One might also have the impression that this was going to be successful, at least for a little time. In spite of this, the fact of the matter was that all of this was intended to be about her and not Harry. I would like to bring to your attention the fact that, as always, we are required to state that this is literally the case. She tried to position herself as a lead in Powerhouse, as we saw when she popped over to that event, where she was unable to obtain a picture with the movies and shakers, such as Gwyneth Paltrow and Reese Witherspoon. You know, you can appreciate the fact that she wanted to position herself in that position. How do you feel about what she said? If you think it's completely believable, comment number one. And if you think what Megan said is a lie, comment number two. She was going to talk from the heart about her children and her concerns about internet bullying and other such topics. And this was going to be the event that would transform all of us. At this point, I believe it is reasonable to assert, is it not that Harry appeared to be continually bored during the entirety of the interview? and that he naturally sprang to life whenever he had moments of trying to remember parts of the script. But it was obvious that Meghan did not like certain aspects of that. It was not really consistent with the story that she was telling. There is a great deal more that can be derived from it, but this is the most significant problem. To put it simply, CBS, and as is customary, we are obligated to state that they reportedly desired to have him participate in the activity. She is not a selling point in and of herself, as they are aware. It is true that there is an audience, but it is not even close to being on the same level as having a former royal sitting next to you and at the same time being interviewed by Jane Powley, a journalist who is immensely respected. Again, you are able to comprehend the perspective that she holds. If you really stop to think about it, you'll realize that everything was so poorly scripted. If you remember when, of course, Miss Powley showed up to do the interview and they were on the balcony, you will remember that Megan went towards her and exclaimed, I am so glad that you were able to come. This is something that you will remember about the situation. May I ask what she means by being able to come? She had a significant role in the interview. During the production, she was a member of the team. Obviously, she was going to show up at just the right time. Regarding this, one more, you should know that it was all like, oh, I'm so glad that you were able to fit it in. Focusing on Meghan is the most important thing. You would have observed, of course, that Harry remained in the background in a manner that was both polite and respectful. There is a source that claims Prince Harry is dissatisfied and uninterested in this life. It is not the kind of life that he had anticipated having in the future. He is currently scurrying around in an attempt to obtain, of course, some presidents, but more importantly, he is attempting to make people interested in his wife. Even during those overcast and dark days that he is experiencing, he is aware of the fact that he must be present in the situation. It's not always something that she wants. However, it appears that they are now obligated to work together 
for a business, and perhaps most significantly for Meghan, she needs to understand that in the absence of Harry, there is just no interest in Meghan Markle, who is a former actress on cable television. In either case, the tale is still in the process of evolving. I think she hates that Harry gets called Prince Harry while she just gets called Meghan Markle. If she lost her Duchess title, as could well happen, she'd have to be called Princess Harry. I wonder how she'd like that. A world without laughter is not one I want to live in. And she is damn funny. What was the bombshell part of the interview? Is Marco lying about suicidal thoughts again? She doesn't get that no one would have cared. No one ever believed she was suicidal. I know depression. She was able to get out of bed, get dressed, put on flawless makeup, and attend a busy function. Sorry, but I don't believe you. Megan, it has been said that one can only teach what one knows. And these two certainly can't teach us about parenting. So, given their combined ability to bully others, which has become their strength, they are going with it. It's interesting to me, Canadians are struggling under crippling carbon taxes levied by our idiot PM. The US is facing the biggest civil crisis since the 1860s, and the UK appears to be going up in flames in the streets. Yet all that pair are concerned with are themselves. Podcasts, jam, and all eyes on that female that is really, really pathetic and will work against them ultimately. The only way to deal with toxic family members is to ignore them and have no contact. If King Charles or any of the royal family say anything public, Harry and Meghan will twist it and make themselves the victims. The American media needs to stop pandering to them and stop interviewing them. Yeah, I saw that. What a phony she is. Harry, how can you stay with her? Your grandmother called her evil. How sad that Meghan walked into this place and made it all about herself, with a grin and a smirk on her face while talking about suicide. To be honest, I don't feel sorry for this idiot at all. He's been utterly vile to his family, and he's allowed her to be the biggest bully. They're both revolting snakes. He deserves every bit of his miserable life. Besides, I don't think Harry can stand his wife. He knows she can't stand him either. In my opinion, Meghan used this suicide threat as a way to get Harry out of the UK. He knows it now and resents her for it. Certainly, this was no interview about helping anyone. They use these vulnerable parents who lost their children to suicide, which is very sad. She launched her business on the backs of these vulnerable people. How is she ever going to succeed in life or at any business using people like this? A typical example is Oprah Winfrey launched her TV show on the backs of vulnerable people who were child EX abuse victims. Many of them committed suicide after the exposure of their victimhood on her show. This too will fail, because who in their right mind would trust their sanity to these two fools? It's almost like Meghan is trying to become a star through Harry's fame, and will then dump him. But because she can't find her niche, and everyone wants Harry, she can't leave him. In fact, she thought he'd get her the attention she needed to be a superstar. It actually might have worked if she hadn't come out the gate, establishing herself as a liar and airing dirty laundry. Then. She just kept making it worse from there, pushing and pulling Harry around and treating other people horribly. Yes, who wants Harry? He is irrelevant, not an official working royal, so he is just Harry. He just speaks word salad and makes no sense just as she does. He can't stand her and she can't stand him. That interview at least showed us all how they feel towards each other. I am not sure why she thinks anyone cares what she thinks. We don't and never will. Meanwhile, I think Meghan should mind her own business first. Do what is necessary for her family. Make up with her father and go public about the kids Archie and Lily. Certainly, they're either adopted or they're paid for through surrogacy. That woman is a sorry piece of work. No class, no humility, no love for those children. Dare I say more? She's not only a weird mother, she is a dangerous, dangerous woman. Harry should run quickly run, be done with that arrogant narcissist and put us all out of our misery. Maybe she faked the suicide issue to trick Harry into feeling he had to get her out of there. Meghan did not know how hard the royals work. She obtained videos and photos, all she could need in order to monetize being a royal. 
She thought Harry was rich. Prince Charles was paying for her ridiculously priced dresses. Harry said he would return to their cottage and Meghan would be on the floor, crying, saying she was reaching out to his mom for advice, that she thought of killing herself and their unborn child. She had no plans on staying there. She said they would not allow her to get psychiatric help. Yet William encouraged Harry to seek mental help. He and Catherine accompanied him, and William set up a way for others to seek mental help assistance. Remember Catherine, whom Harry said was the sister that he never had. That is, until Meghan's conniving self showed up. It's true that Harry is just a backdrop for Prince William to shine brighter. The more evil Harry is, the more wonderful Prince William is. Prince William loves and adores his wife. It's evident in their interactions and the way they look at each other. He waited to marry because he wanted Katerine to know what she would be taking on as the wife of the future king. That made sense, considering what he experienced growing up. On the other hand, self-serving Harry rushed into a marriage he really didn't want because he was in love with the idea of being married. He was in lust, not love. As far as the Duchess of Dog Biscuits, she had an agenda from the very beginning and played him like a violin. Now, he's living with the real Duchess of Dog Biscuits and hating it. Do you agree with the issues I analyzed? Please share your thoughts on this topic or anything you want to say to me in the comments below. I always look forward to your sharing and contributions. Please motivate us to make more quality videos by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. Now goodbye and see you again.